Hello everybody, this is me Johan here. Now over the past one week I've been using the brand new Moto One Macro as my primary device and this is my in-depth review of the Moto One Macro. Before we go ahead with this review, uh, if you guys haven't subscribed to my channel already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button right down there. And right after that, hit the bell icon, the notifications icon, so that you all get notified with the latest videos I upload on YouTube from here on. The one thing in this phone which I was really impressed was with the quality of these IPS LCD display used on this phone. Yes, it's just a 720p display. Initially, I thought, okay, will this be good on this phone? But telling you the truth, I did not miss a 1080p display. And as you guys can see, it is on its saturated settings right now. And it's been a real pleasurable experience. I mean, the display on this phone overall. I'll just play a short video clip to give you guys an idea of the quality of the display used on this phone. As you guys can see, this clip is being played at 720p, it's maximum resolution, and its screen brightness has been set to 100%. As you guys can see, it's a bright and a vibrant and a punchy display. I really did not miss using a full HD plus uh, display. Uh, this phone's display provides a really good experience as far as multimedia is concerned. Adapter brightness is something I generally do not use on phones, but since a lot of you use it, I decided to test it out on this phone. I tested it out here and there, and I must say one thing, the calibration of the ad adapter brightness on this phone has been done really well. So, good job in this department. As you guys can see, I'm under direct sunlight right now, and the phone's brightness has been set to 100%. It has to be set to 100% brightness to view it directly under direct sunlight. This is the TPU case that came along with the phone and as it is, as always, it's a perfect fit on the phone. Well, this is the charging brick that comes in the box of the Moto One Macro. Uh, Motorola called this a fast charger. Although the length of the charging cable uh, provided uh, in the box of the uh, Moto One Macro is reasonably long, as you guys can see. I just felt uh, it could have been a little bit more longer. In terms of charging speeds, the phone takes exactly 2 hours and 20 minutes to charge the phone from 10 to 100%. The good news on all of this is the charging port is type C. So that's a thumbs up. As far as the speaker is concerned, it does come with a single fairing speaker right down towards its right bottom chin. As you guys can hear, the speaker has been set at its maximum volume right now. And believe me, it's, it's quite loud at maximum volume. And it gives a very pleasurable experience. Keep in mind, the phone is only 10K and I don't find any kind of unwanted distortion or anything you find in most of the phones at this price range. Overall, very happy with the single pairing speaker performance. The one small gripe to this is you need to set the volume at 100%. Below that, uh, it's a good experience, but I wouldn't call it a bad experience. But then again, keep in mind, the phone's only 10K and it's at its maximum volume. It's, it's really good, really, really good for the price, I would say. In terms of build quality, the back of the phone, as you guys can see, is made up of polycarbonate. It looks really nice, but the only problem to this is it attracts a lot of fingerprints. Regarding the front of the phone, they've not really specified the version of Corning Gorilla Glass. I guess it is some unspecified version of Corning Gorilla Glass used in the front. As you guys can see, towards the right side of the phone, you find the power button along with the volume rockers. The power button, fortunately, this time has got a texture to it that helps differentiate it uh, from the volume rockers and both of them feel tactile and very well put together. No complaints in this department whatsoever. The headphone jack along with the active no noise cancellation mic are both placed right on the top of the phone. Now regarding the actual quality that I got out of the headphones, I must say one thing. The volume I got out of this was pretty loud. With a decent pair of headphones, you can get pretty good volume out of this. The only thing is the quality might not be the greatest. I would say it is in between. There are phones that cost 2 or 3k more than this, having the Dolby Atmos embedded in it, but better quality of audio. But in terms of volume, it matches and even surpasses some of them. In terms of call quality and reception, again over here the phone performed really well. Never did I face any issues where I couldn't hear what the other person on the other side was saying. Neither did the other person face any issues. It's been really good. In terms of connectivity, I'll just showcase this to you guys. I'm just switching the SIM right now. As you guys can see, this phone does support dual 4G. As you guys can see, the Bluetooth connectivity is fast and quite instant. And over here I did not face any issues. It's a thumbs up in this area. 
The one area where this phone has excelled above everything else for me was in terms of its performance. With 4 GB of RAM and that Helio P70 processor and of course the 720p display running full time, this phone has really just fly through the apps. You guys can just see the app opening speeds on this phone are fast, fluid and extremely consistent. I could not get anything to slow this phone down. As you guys can see, it's really fast and really consistent. I even played games like Call of Duty and PUBG on its high graphics settings and nothing I did could get this phone to slow down. So performance wise, I would rate this phone 9 out of 10. Excellent. Really excellent for its price. Then again, the stock Android is what helps it out in terms of its performance. As far as gaming goes, if you are looking for a stock Android phone, and even more specific, it should be a Motorola that can game and have a budget of 10k. The Moto 1 Macro is a great choice over here. PUBG played smooth at HD graphics and high frame rates and was a good experience. The battery drain was 9-10% every 30 minutes. The back of the phone over here near the rear of the camera got slightly warm during gaming. Call of Duty again played smoothly at high graphics settings and was also a pleasurable experience. The battery drain was again 9-10% and keep in mind all of this was achieved using 70% of the screen's brightness. In terms of battery life again, the only thing I can say is this phone has been rock solid and believe me, the heaviest of heavy users can get one full day, that is 24 hours out of this phone's battery and a medium user can get one and a half days, a light user can easily get uh, two days out of this phone's battery. In terms of screen on times, I average anywhere between seven and a half and eight and above hours of screen on time and this is with gaming. If you do not game, this phone can easily give you over eight hours of screen on time. Battery life has been rock solid on the Moto 1 Macro. That again, to keep in mind, it does house a 720p display and it's got a pretty big 4000 mAh battery inside and uh, I'm very happy to say that this battery has been really, really, really good. In terms of camera, it comes with a triple camera setup at the back. The main sensor is a 13 megapixel sensor. The second sensor is a 2 megapixel depth sensor and the third sensor is a 2 megapixel macro sensor. And in front you have a 8 megapixel selfie cam. In terms of the actual camera performance on this phone, the rear camera does a really good job in idle daylighting situations. But then again, I got to tell you guys one thing. The lighting needs to be idle. If the lighting is idle, it takes some really good shots that look really natural in color. But if the lighting is a little off, it tends to overexpose the image. The macro shots come out really well on this phone's camera and the 8 megapixel selfie camera also does a good job in idle daylighting situations but then again over here as well the lighting needs to be good otherwise even that tends to overexpose the background in terms of portrait shots i feel portrait mode really needs some work on this phone the edge detection doesn't seem to be all that great but overall it's a satisfactory experience and Lastly, the low light camera performance on this phone is really not its strong point. It struggles to take shots during low light. But keep in mind, if you're on the selfie flash and also the rear camera flash and take shots, it does some justice to it. But low light camera performance is very, very average on this phone.
The face unlock and the fingerprint scanner have both worked flawlessly without any issues. The fingerprint scanner on this phone is placed right at the back. The rear, uh, you have the Moto logo embedded inside as well. Tap, open, tap, open. As you guys can see, there's about a half a second delay, but it's very, very, very reliable. Now, regarding the uh, face unlock, I'll just showcase it to you guys right now. All you guys need to do is hit the power button, place it towards your face, and as you guys can see, you're in in an instant. One more time, hit the power button, place it towards your face, and as you guys can see, it's been really fast and very accurate and a lot faster than the fingerprint scanner. In terms of software, the phone runs Android 9 Pi out of the box and the security patch is September 5th of 2019. We are in the month of October. Motorola have promised one major software update and two years of security updates. As far as SAR values go, the head SAR is 0.542 WKG and the body worn SAR is 1.328 WKG. The one small gripe to this phone is on its rear cam, you cannot uh, record videos at 4K. I'll just show it to you guys. You guys can see. Uh, full HD uh, is the highest resolution you can uh, record videos on this phone. That is 1080p. Fortunately though, video stabilization is available on its rear cam. This video clip you're seeing is being played using the... Uh Rare cam with the Moto 1 Macro, it's been shot at 1080p, that's full HD, at its 19 by 9 aspect ratio. You guys have a look at the footage and decide for yourselves. Alright, I'll just walk a bit and just give you guys an idea about the stabilization. By the way, the stabilization is on. This video clip you're seeing is played using the selfie cam of the Moto 1 Macro. This is again being shot at full HD, that is at 1080p at its 19 by 9 aspect ratio. So I'll just walk a bit and give you guys an idea of how stable it is. And finally to conclude, buy this phone if you want amazing performance for a sub 10k price. Uh, number two, if you want really good battery life. And if you really, really want a macro camera at a budget, uh, this phone got a really good macro camera. And on top of it, people who really like to game, keep in mind, this phone's got the Helio P70 uh, octa-core processor inside. So that's equi equivalent or a little bit more powerful than the Snapdragon 660. So gaming on this phone has been a really, really good experience. So people who are uh, into gaming and are on a budget, uh, this, is, this might actually be the best phone to buy under 10k right now. And finally, one more point to note. Those of you who are on a budget and those of you who plan to buy the Moto E6s, which was just launched some time back, uh, my sincere suggestion to y'all would be to put in another 2,000 rupees and buy this Moto 1 Macro, because this is a way better phone compared to that in terms of almost everything. So that's it for me today, guys. I hope you guys liked the video. If you guys liked the video, I'd sincerely appreciate it if you guys could give me a thumbs up. So what else can I say? Wishing all of you a tremendous day ahead of you. Ciao for now.